Hello! In this video we're going to go through the history of HMS Campbelltown. The kit is from Flyhawk. It's a 1 to 700 scale kit and it's actually the first kit I'm building in about 20 years and it's also my first chip so let's go! The Royal Navy Town Class Destroyer HMS Campbelltown started her life as a U.S. Navy VIX Class Destroyer USS Buchanan, which entered service shortly after World War I. But she ended her life as perhaps the bravest little ship there ever was, spearheading the greatest commander raid during World War II, Operation Chariot. In the end of summer of 1940, the Battle of Britain was raging and the British Isles stood alone against the Germans. The German U-boats were wrecking havoc with the Atlantic supply convoys and the United Kingdom could only hold on for so long. The Royal Navy was one of the largest in the world at the time, but because England had a long history of claiming parts of the world by sailing up to them and sticking flags in them, the Royal Navy was stretched thin. With a large amount of England, they simply didn't have enough destroyers and other escort vessels to protect their convoys. Although the United States hadn't yet entered the war, and to be fair a lot of Americans, including politicians, didn't want to, it was clear that when Britain fell, the war would come to the U.S. sooner or later. In that situation, the U.S. would want as many naval bases between themselves and the Germans as possible. The American President Roosevelt wanted to help, but he was up for re-election and didn't want to seem as being pro-war. It also didn't help that the Neutrality Act prevented the sale of arms to countries at war. The solution was as simple as it was one-sided. The Royal Navy would receive 50 clapped-out destroyers, mainly of the Vix and Clemson class, in exchange for the US getting rent-free 99-year-long leases of land to build naval and air bases on. Many of the destroyers were in quite a sorry state, having been in reserve for most of the time after World War I, and required extensive overhaul before they could be used to any great effect. At one point, the, the British Prime Minister Winston Churchill apparently told Roosevelt that we have so far only been able to bring a few of your 50 destroyers into action on account of the many defects which did naturally develop when exposed to Atlantic weather after having been laid up so long. But, beggars can't be choosers, and the new town class destroyers, including Campbelltown, were put into service. She started her European career in patrolling the western approaches, but was soon transferred to the Royal Netherlands Navy, where she took part in convoy defense, before soon returning back to the Royal Navy and continued to serve in convoy escorts through 1941. Her claim to fame was soon approaching.
German battleship Bismarck had been sunk on the 27th of May 1941 when trying to enter into the Atlantic to perform convoy raiding. But his brother, the Tirpitz, still posed a massive threat to Allied supply convoys. Early in 1942 he was hidden away in Norway. If Tirpitz was to enter the Atlantic, it wouldn't matter how many old and rusty escort ships you had. He was made to rule the seas. It was vital that Tirpitz was contained. If Tirpitz was to enter the Atlantic, there was only one dry dock in German-occupied Europe big enough to service him. The Louis Joubert dry dock, also known as the Normandy dock in Saint-Nazaire on the French Atlantic coast. Without the possibility of repair after engagements or due to bad weather, Tirpitz would have to run the gauntlet back to Germany if he was to take any damage. Germany wouldn't risk this. So to prevent the Tirpitz from entering the Atlantic, the Normandy dock had to go. A land assault was out of the picture. This was deep in occupied France, after all. High altitude bombing wouldn't work either, because at the time the RAF had difficulty hitting anything with any reasonable accuracy. Due to the submarine dock at Senesir, the amount of anti-aircraft guns would mean a low altitude air raid was certain suicide. As was a naval bombardment, as the dry dock was at the inner end of a long estuary, and any battleship would be sunk before even getting in range. The German U-boat pens tended to be heavily defended with lots of big guns and Saint-Nazaire was no exception. The British would have to be very sneaky indeed to pull this off. Enter HMS Campbelltown, the old clapped out destroyer that was not really useful for anything. In preparation for Operation Chariot, the raid on Saint Nazaire, she underwent several modifications. Two of her funnels were removed, and the remaining two were raked to give a glancing resemblance to a German torpedo boat. All of her heavy equipment torpedo launchers, main armament, and everything else that wasn't needed was removed to make her as light as possible. But wh when you are attacking uh, a heavily fortified position of quite vital strategic importance, it's important to be able to protect yourself. So I imagine that at one point this conversation took place. Okay, so what do you need besides a miracle? Guns. 
Lots of guns. She was rearmed with a single 12 pounder gun and eight 20 millimeter Orlikans. The Orlikan is a Swiss made anti aircraft gun and, as such, spits out bullets at quite an impressive pace. And you don't want to be on the receiving end of that. Additionally, her main armament was 4.1 tons of high explosives hidden in her bows, armed with clay fuses. Campbelltown wasn't to go in alone. A total of 16 motor launches, small patrol boats armed with Orlikans and Lewis guns also took part. Some were to provide fire support, others carried torpedoes to blow stuff up. Preferably something vital. And, to top it off, 265 soldiers from the British Army 2nd Commando Unit came along with the 346 Royal Navy personnel. Their job was to blow up what was left, with the aim of the operation being the total incapacitation of the Normandy dock. It was now March 1942, and HMS Campbelltown was ready to ram herself into the Normandy dock, unload a bunch of commando soldiers, and later blow herself up, taking the dry dock with her. Once I build, build the diorama for this, we'll go into Operation Chariot itself. So thank you for listening, I greatly enjoyed the build, challenging though it was, and I find that the history of the ship can be just as interesting as building the ship. So stay tuned for Operation Chariot, coming soon. <laughs>